Good morning, stamping friends. We're here live with our weekly live class on Facebook. I'm so happy to be with you today. I have some really cute projects today and they are too cool. And I'm very excited to show you them. I am also, for today, going to be offering a live class kit. And as we work through the projects, I'll show you what's going to be in the live class kit. But it's basically all the supplies that you're going to need to recreate the projects that I'm making today. So, um, I also wanted to, um, and I'll give you a host code for that too. So, when you place your order, um, you just order with me. You just need a $35 minimum order and I'll give you that live class kit for free. And when we turn the camera around, I'll show you the host code. So get your pencils ready so you know, uh, so you'll be able to write that down and you can uh, use that to place your order. Okay, I also wanted to remind you, mark your calendars for next week. It's a big deal because we're gonna be having the online extravaganza. This is an annual thing that Stampin' Up! does every year and they put a ton of stuff on sale. Uh, I don't know what the percentages off are this year. I don't know what's on sale yet. They're going to give us that information a little bit later, but you need to mark it on your calendar. So it's November 20th through November 22nd. So just three days of really great deals. So plan on coming to twocoolstamping.com and check out all the details, see what's on sale. And um, a lot of times you can stock up on some things that you really need to stock up on. So it's a great time of year, right before Black Friday, and maybe you can get some gifts as well. Okay, so um, like I mentioned, we're gonna be doing a couple of really cool projects. So the first one, um, and I'll show you this when we flip the camera around, I'll show you again, but it's a really cute little card that Julie Davison sent me as a swap, and it has this cute little flip. And so I'll show you that. How to um, we're gonna do it in a different style but I, this is the card that she sent me we're also going to be sharing um, a couple of days ago I had these little boxes on my blog the little mini curvy keepsakes boxes and they're so super easy to make if you need table favors for your holiday table you could do them in a uh, a Thanksgiving theme and do them for your Christmas or do your do them for your Thanksgiving table um, just a little gift for you know a co-worker a friend a neighbor so cute and so easy to put together you're gonna be amazed at how quick they come together and I'm going to show you a different style of those as well so without any further ado we're gonna flip the camera around and we're going to hello everybody I see some people are on here already thanks for joining me this morning Let's flip the camera around here. Hold on. All right. For some, there we go. For some reason it wasn't wanting to focus. Okay. So here is, let me just, sorry, and move this just a little bit. So I get a little bit better screen here. So, all right, so I wanna give you that host code for today. So we're gonna have the live class kit available for free. You just need to place a twenty or a $35 order at uh, twocoolstamping.com. Just go there, click the shop now link. That'll take you right to my online store. And then you just need to type in the uh, host code at the shopping bag page and it's WFW6AHHE and that will get you today's class kit so that you can make the same projects that I'm making today. Okay, so I showed you on when the camera was the other way, but let's see it the correct way. So this is a card that I, it's actually, I made this one, but it's exactly like Julie Davison's card that she gave to me for a swap earlier uh, in the holiday season. And I love you just pull on that scallop tag topper. Actually, it's the ornate tag topper. And that makes that cute little flip. So adorable. I mean, I just absolutely love it. You can see on it, there's some puff paint. And we're going to use that on the card that I'm going to make too. So I'm going to show you some tips on that. And then on the inside, adorable. Just the cute little sentiment. And this is all from the Snowman Season stamp set. And we've talked about that an awful lot. So And the uh, Let It Snow designer series paper. So I'm going to show you how to make a card just like this and you it's so awesome because you can use this template and just put whatever 
you know, whatever images that you want on there and whatever papers you want, whatever colors you want. And it's just a super cute little design of a card that's a fun. It's always fun to have a, a little bit of an interaction. So we'll put that up here. And we are going to use this cute little Elfie set. Have you guys seen this one? This isn't in any kind of a suite or anything like that, just kind of an individual stamp set in the holiday catalog, but it is so cute. And if you like to color, it's so much fun to color too. So we're gonna use that, hashtag Elfie. And um, the number on that is 150509. So we'll use that. We're also going to use the perfectly plaid, wrapped in plaid, I should say, the wrapped in plaid paper. And I've been using that on a lot of things because it's so pretty. It's elegant and it's um, it's very traditional. So you have all of the Christmas colors in there, a little bit of blue, so you can really do a lot of traditional colored projects. And those gold accents really make it very elegant. You can dress it up or dress it down. So this card with the whimsical style is gonna kind of, it's not gonna be as elegant, but you'll, You'll just love how it goes together with that paper. So we're gonna use that today. I'm gonna to start out with, get some of my pieces here. I'm gonna start out with a cherry cobbler card base. I'm gonna move this down so I have a little bit more room to work here. Make sure that's in the, in the screenshot. So my cherry cobbler card base. Then we're gonna have our piece of designer series paper. This is the wrapped in plaid that I told you about. It's three and a quarter, or uh, yes, three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And that will go right here. Then we also have another piece. This is five and three quarters by two. This is gonna be for our little mechanism to pull. And you're also going to need some other little pieces here. So you have two and a quarter by uh, two and three quarters. And then two, I'm sorry, this is shaded spruce. Let me tell you what color it is. <laughs> so that's two and a quarter by two and three quarters. This is two by two and a half, and that's the Whisper White. And then actually only need one of these, but this is one and a half by one and three quarter Whisper White. So those are our little pieces that we need. And then we'll also need the inside. So you'll need just a card inside of the five and a quarter by four. All right, let's start by making this little mechanism. So this is, we want this to definitely be two inches because it's gonna fit inside of the ornate tag topper punch. But before we do that, we need to do a little bit of scoring. So this has to happen before. I'm gonna get my new paper trimmer out. And I love this paper trimmer. If you guys don't have this paper trimmer and you need a paper trimmer, this is awesome. It has really good scoring. So we're gonna score at three and a half. And we're also gonna score at four. The markings on it are really easy to read and the blades are phenomenal. So much better than the previous trimmer. You're really gonna love it. So now we have this longer piece. If you can see the score lines here, you can see this longer piece and a shorter panel here. Before you do any folding, you're gonna stick this in the tag topper punch. This is the ornate tag topper and you want the long side. So if you can see where those score lines are, the long side's gonna go in there. And just push that in there flush all the way. And it makes that really pretty tag topper. And that will fit, if, if you use this punch, you can use it for two inch wide. And then they have these different um, stair-stepped little slots basically. So you can have a one inch, a one and a half inch, and a two inch and just slide those in there very easily easily, and it'll line it up so that it'll be nice and centered when you make that punch. So that's really fun too. Okay, now we're gonna fold on those score lines. And this is our 
mechanism for pulling. Now we need to have the background piece, which will be the second part of our mechanism. So again, we have the three and a quarter by four and a quarter. This time we're gonna use the classic label punch. And what you wanna do with that is you're gonna go in on the side and you're gonna push it all the way flush and then just kind of center as best that you can, just kind of eyeball. It's not gonna to need to be perfect and punch. So this is gonna be a little slot that that holder is gonna slide through. Now we're gonna place that short panel up through the middle like this. So you can see on this flip, when you flip it, it's this is going underneath and then it's gonna come up and around. So you place that like this and then we're gonna add some tear and tape to it, adhere it. So I'm just gonna flip it over. I'm gonna get my tear and tape. I like to use, you could use snail if you, uh, if you want to. I like to use tear and tape on any kind of a car that has a pull mechanism of any sort because I just like to make sure that that is not gonna come loose when they pull it. That would not be a fun surprise. So I just use a couple of strips of tear and tape and then also a little bit of snail just because snail's a little less expensive and we don't need it all the way around, the tear and tape all the way around. Okay, so now, so we didn't put any on this side because this is the side that's going to be the pull side, so you wanna keep that open. We're gonna line that up about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, or not a quarter of an inch, half inch, about a half an inch from the edge and onto our card front. So there we go. So now we have this ready to go. Next, we're gonna add some, uh, let's see. Let's do some, before we get to the, um, the rest of this mechanism, I'm going to do the, the pretties that we wanna put on there. So let's decorate those right now. So we're gonna start um, with this piece of Whisper White. Again, that's two and a half. No, two by two and a half. We're gonna stamp in Memento ink. We're gonna use this really cute elf that's in a stocking. He's adorable. Make sure I have some good ink on there, and I do. So I'll stamp him. Cute. And while we're stamping, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the center piece too. So again, this is one and a half by one and three quarter. And I'm gonna stamp the little present from the set, also in Memento ink. Put that right at the bottom. And then a little sentiment. We're gonna do that in shaded spruce. And it just says, just for you, and we'll put that right above the present. All right, now we need to do some coloring. So if you like to do coloring, this is great. You could use watercolor pencils with blender pens. You could use ink pads with blender pens. Of course, my favorite, my preferred way of coloring is with the Stampin' Blends. And so that is what I'm gonna use. Let's see. Actually, before I get started, um, let me go ahead and do the puff paint. I, I've kind of been, I've just started playing with puff, puff paint, so I'm not a professional at it yet, but I have learned that sometimes um, if you have the color on there first, it will bleed the color just a little bit. So let's do the puff paint first just to show you that, and then we can color around it. So this puff paint is super cute. If you have been around um, back in the 80s, we used to do puff paint on, um, t-shirts you might remember that that's showing my age right there but anyway so you wanted to just shake it just a little bit and then you want to go just a little bit you don't want to um, you know kind of make sure that you have a controlled um, application that's not all kind of blobbing out because you just want a little bit so I'm gonna add a little bit right on his fur of his hat and then I'm also going to just add a bunch of dots like it's snowing all around. 
this guy's hanging out in the middle of winter and it's snowing. I don't know if it snowed where you live, but it snowed this week and it's really super bitterly cold and I'm not liking that. <laughs> it's too early for all of that. I do like snow though, but a little too early. Okay, so I just have little dots and then I have that little bit right there. And I actually think I might put just a smidgen more. I wanna make sure I cover that whole trim. Woo, that's a lot. All right, let's see what happens. We're gonna actually get our, our heat tool out here. I'm going to use my tweezers so I don't get burned. And pardon the noise, but I want you to see how this puffs up. I think you're really gonna like it. So it's gonna take just a minute to warm up. And then can you see it start to change there at the bottom? And like little cotton balls start appearing all over your piece. It's so cool, I love it, it's too cool. And then we'll make sure that his hat trim is nice and puffy. All right. Isn't that awesome? I think that's so phenomenal. Now, while it's still warm, if you have any parts that might be like kind of jutting into another area, you can kind of push that with your fingernail, push it back to where you want it to go. You can also push down on it if it's popping up a little too much and you just want to kind of control it. When it's warm, uh, you can manipulate it just a little bit. Um, and you can also go back and rewarm it if you, you know, still need to go back and kind of put it in its place. So I love that. I think that's so much fun. Okay, let's do some coloring. So I'm going to use the dark cherry cobbler and do his hat. Actually, I'm going to use the brush tip so I can get right by, right up there by the puff paint. And we're just gonna color that in. If you wanted to take some time and do the light color of Cherry Cobbler and then do some shading with the darker, you could certainly do that. I'm just gonna color to save some time. Just color it with one color. I'm gonna use the, I keep wanting to use the, I like the brush tip end just because you can get into little tiny spaces very easily. So this is the dark, shaded spruce I'm kind of looking at this at an angle because of the camera so we'll see how good we can color at an angle I'm going to put dark shaded spruce on the top and also the heel and the toe now remember when you're using your brush tip, you want to, you don't want to scribble a lot, you want to paint like a brush. So just kind of go in one direction and paint the strokes of color on. Now I'm going to use the light cherry cobbler. So I use the dark cherry cobbler for the hat and I'm going to use the light cherry cobbler for some of these stripes just to have a little bit of a difference, a little bit of a contrast. The light cherry cobbler almost looks like real red. And we'll use the light shaded spruce <coughs> for the other stripes here. See there's just a little bit of a difference in color just to give it a little variation between the greens. All right, and then we'll finish up the elf's face with some light petal pink. And the hair, is going to be light, uh, light soft suede. I like the light soft suede because it almost has a gold tone to it. So it's almost like a blonde color.
color for his hair and I was trying to match the gold in the stripes or the in the plaid of the wrapped in plaid. Let me add some light soft suede to the little jingle bell at the top. He'll be, have a little gold bell up there. Isn't he so cute? I love it. I think we need to add just a little bit of Wink of Stella just to give it a little glimmer. I'm gonna add that on his jingle bell. I'm gonna add it on his hat. This stuff looks great on everything, especially for the holidays. Gives it, just kind of dresses it up, gives it a more festive feel to get some glitter and glimmer and shimmer on there. So I'm just doing it on all of the red and also the jingle bell. All right, isn't that cute? Okay, so that is our cute little elf and I'm going to adhere this little guy. Actually, I'm gonna just put the snail right on the background here. I'll have all the, uh, the blah, blah. I'll have all of the measurements on my uh, post when I get done. I'll put all of those in there. So that is that and that's gonna be our cute little uh, focal point. Let's also color in our present really quickly. So I'm going to color that again with the light cherry cobbler for the bow. And then the light shaded spruce for the rest of the package. So again, I like the contrast, that lighter shade, shaded spruce it's just a little bit different than the sentiment that we added, so. Just a little bit different color. And of course, we need just a little wink of Stella on that as well, so I'm gonna add that to the bow, just the red cherry cobbler areas. All right, there is gonna be the inside and we'll put that on in a minute. Okay, now we're gonna finish this mechanism. So we're gonna need just a couple more pieces of the tear and tape adhesive. And this is where you definitely want to use tear and tape since this is the mechanism that's gonna pull. So I'm gonna cover, I have just a little tiny bit of puff paint there. I'm gonna cover that up so I don't get my card messed up. And then I'm going to Add a little bit of tear and tape right here on the inside of that uh, that panel there and then I'm also going to add it to in between the two score lines on this little spine so a little piece right there as well all right now to line it up I want to show you on this one so when this is fully open this scallop uh, tag top, the ornate tag topper, is just maybe an, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And then this part is where we're gonna adhere it to the background. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take this backing off of the tear and tape. And then we're gonna line up this edge about an eighth of an inch. We're gonna make sure it's nice and centered in between those two points of the classic label punch cut out there so that it'll slide really well. It doesn't get hung up on the edges there. And just make sure it's nice and parallel to your uh, top and bottom edges. And then fold that down. Then when you pull on this, or when you, did I do it right? I didn't do it right. I messed up. Shh. I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't work. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, I don't know how I got that up, but we're gonna, did I do that right? Now I'm so confused. Aha. We want it to be closed. <laughs> I'm so sorry, all of a sudden I totally forgot how to do it, okay. 
So that's gonna be open. It should be right. I don't know, I know. I'm second guessing myself. All right, there we go. I just, for some reason, I got hung up and it wasn't moving in between there. And I was like, wait a minute. Okay, so I was right the first time. So you just do it so it's a little bit off. I'm so sorry. I've been practicing this too. <laughs> so anyway, you fold it over and then it's attached there and then it should push. I was getting confused. So we're gonna push it in and when it's pushed in, then you have this side that's showing. <sighs> Don't second guess yourself. You had it right the first time, right? All right, so now I took this tape off the edge of this little spine, and the key to this one is you want this edge to line up flush with this outermost edge of this when it's already when it's all fully open. So we're gonna add that. And you kind of put it right in the center. If you need to, you know, kind of look and see how your outside here is looking to make sure that's nice and lined up. And then, there we go. I did have it right. Shoo! It's really not as hard as it seems. <laughs> I just totally second guessed myself and made it look much harder than it is. All right, now we're gonna use, see, everyone messes up. <laughs> Now we're gonna use some snail and just add this little piece to the inside. It's all coming together now. And we're also gonna to need to add a little piece of ribbon here for our little pull tab. And so for that, I have the gold metallic edged ribbon. I'm actually gonna put the two ends in first and then we'll flip that right through there. So we have a cute, nice little finished look there. And then we'll cut the ends off. And they don't need to be real long. You don't want them to hang over too much because you, otherwise they'll get in the way when you put them in the envelope. So there's the little pull tab. All right. Yay, what do you think? Do you love it? I think he's so cute, he's so adorable. Now we're gonna finish the inside. Uh, I, there's so many cute little uh, images in this hashtag Elfie set that I wanted to use one of the bigger images. So I already did it already because it's a lot of coloring, but I just thought it was really awesome to use that whole big image where he's on the standing on the present and <laughs> playing with that great big ornament. I added some shimmer to the ornament. I used all the same colors, so the same light soft suede, kind of looks gold here, the shaded spruce in the light and dark to get a little bit of var variation, the light and dark of the cherry cobbler. I just think he's adorable. And then of course I had to add the puff paint, so I added that to all of his trim on his outfit and then also some snow because on the outside, you know, it's all snowing and then it gets done snowing and there's just a bunch of snow on the bottom. And then the sentiment is really, really cute. May your Christmas be merry and full of delight with a new year that's happy and healthy and bright. I just thought that was a, a fantastic way to end the card. It's a lot of surprise to this card and a lot of fun. So anyway, I hope you had a lot of fun learning that. Try this out. It really is fun because you can use a lot of different images that coordinate together and you can, you know, you can do this for any kind of card, for flowers or, um, you know, sympathy, anything you wanted to. I think it's particularly fun for a whimsical card, um, you know, so like the, the one with the cow uh, over the moon, that would be so much fun to do that. Or this little piggy, that would be fun too. Anyway, lots of fun. So here are those fancy flip cards. Let me know which one you like. I like both of them, but I tell you, I totally fell in love with Julie's card. That's what really made me want to do this card for you today. Hope you love it. All right, so let's do the next project. Our next project, like I said, um, I had done these cute little mini uh, curvy keepsakes boxes, and I did those for, for my team meeting. We had them as a little table gift. And I loved how they turned out. I just used the Coastal Cabana and the curly red ribbon. 
and some of the Let It Snow paper, and I wanted to show you how easy it was to put those together. So here's, a, here's another one that I did with the striped paper and another one of the tags. Now this is using the Tiny Tags Bundle. Ty no, that's not true. It's called Tiny Keepsakes. Tiny Keepsakes Bundle. And it has, lots, it has some cute backgrounds here that you can use with the curvy, um, the mini curvy keepsakes box. And then it has a lot of little sentiments here that you can use on the tags. But my favorite is the die. Obviously you get the great big die that you can use to create your box. And it's all in one. So it's super easy. You just put this on a five and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. And so you can get two out of each sheet of cardstock and everything is just all one piece and it folds up and, um, and just connects together, interlocks together so you don't need any adhesive. And then we have all of these accessories, all of these different tag shapes and um, it has little snowflake dies that go with the snowflake uh, image. So, so super cute and these like I said, these favors are coming together so fast, you're gonna love how quickly you can make a bunch of them. So they're great for parties, they're great for if you had to give a whole classroom of gifts out, um, you know, take them to all your coworkers, just lots of fun ways that you can use these cute little boxes. So I'm gonna show you today how to make them with the wrapped in plaid paper. So I've already gotten the die cut of the box already cut out for us and then I'm going to use a piece of the wrapped in plaid and again just like the tag topper punch that we had this is going to be two inches wide and then I just left it the six inches that it was you don't necessarily need all six inches of that um, maybe five and a half but you're not going to be using any of the extra anyway probably so um, so I already went through and you simply die cut let me show you. I'll just line it up for you here. You're just going to die cut that piece just like this. So when you run it through, you'll line it up with the handle piece. So the part, the side that has the handle, and you're going to be using this part and this part, but not this part. So if you wanted to, you could do a smaller piece. If you wanted to save paper, you could do two smaller pieces and just cut out these sections. I just did a strip just because it was easy and that way I, I can get it lined up really well since it's kind of a directional type of a paper. So I ran that through and then this is what I came up with and it doesn't look like much here but we're going to cut out the edges and so you're just going to cut right on the score line. You might have to clean up some of the points that it leaves and then again cut on the other score line where that handle would start. So there is your side piece. We'll do that again on this one. It's just a quick and easy way to decorate this. Even the cutting here doesn't take much time. I put together about 24 of these um, in just a little bit of time. It didn't take very much time at all. All right, so here's our two pieces. Now, before we get started, I want to curl the edges of this. And I've discovered that when you go to put these together, you can see that it's it kind of looks just like a triangle, but you want it to have a nice curved look to it. And it will naturally curve when you, you know, if you put it together, but to help it along, I think makes it a little bit, makes the curve a little bit prettier. So I'm just gonna use the center of my bone folder and just very gently, curve that around the edge. And you want to be gentle because you don't want to crease it as you curl it. You just want to kind of form it around the edge just so it gets a little bit of a curved shape. All right. So there are just a little bit just a little bit of a curve that's gonna help us. Now we're gonna use some of the liquid multi-purpose glue and adhere these sides. So we just need a little bit. Okay, 
You're going to line it up with the score line. And then just hold it in place for a minute, not even a minute. I'm going to add this one as well. And that's all the glue we're going to need. Add that to that side. Just let it set a little bit. All right, so those are our sides, so cute. Now we can just fold all of this up and we'll pull these handles together. And there is a score line right here, so I like to, I put them together and then I just kind of push down to kind of pop that out a little bit to curve it. And then these side pieces go right over the top and, it, whoops, what am I doing here? Right over the top and they interlock. So there's one side. And before we close it up, I'm gonna put a couple pieces of candy in there. I've got some Hershey's Kisses. And I have four, you could probably put five in there. You could also put Dove chocolates or little wrapped candies. And then you can just close the other side. And it does kind of, if you push it down far enough, there's just a little groove there so it latches and locks and it won't pop open. So there's our little box. Oh, so cute, so cute. All right, so now we just need to decorate that with one of these tags. And again, you have these cute little tags. I should have done them in a color so you can see. A teardrop shape, an oval shape, a square, a little star, and a heart. So wouldn't that be cute for Valentine's Day? You could start getting a jump on that. Okay, I think I'm gonna do, let's see. Let's see which ones I did. Let's do the teardrop one. I haven't done that one yet. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do it in the shaded spruce to match the box color. And I'm gonna use Holly Jolly. Holly Jolly, so cute. Okay, next I'm gonna take a little piece of the white Baker's Twine. And I just, you don't need very much of it, but I made it long enough so that you could, so that I could actually tie it really easily. So if you make things too short, it's hard to manipulate and tie. So I'm gonna thread both, just like we did with the other one, I thread both ends through first and then pull that up through the loop. And that attaches it nicely to our tag. And then I'm gonna make another little loop that I'm gonna thread my ribbon through. So let me just show you what I mean by that because it might be hard to see. So actually I'm gonna be tying this twine onto the bow, onto the ribbon. So we'll put that on there. That gives us something to tie it to. And then we'll tie that in a double knot. Okay, so there is our little tag tied to our ribbon. And we'll cut that off. Just have a little left there. All right, so there we have our tag. So, holly jolly. Okay, and we're just gonna thread this through. This is why you need to put your candy in before you finish it off. We wanna make the ribbon so that it's easy to come off and on. Um, so that your recipient can get in the box and get the candy and then if they want to put the box together again they can. So we're just going to tie it in a, a nice easy bow just like you would your shoestring. And 
and we'll trim the edges, trim the ends. And you can fluff that up and do a little bit better job than I did there on the fly, but you get what I mean. All right, so there's our little bow with our little Holly Jolly sticker, super cute. And <clears throat> I did a couple of other boxes here. I tried one with the blue and shaded spruce plaid. And, oh, I forgot, I need to add my little bling. Of course, you know you need a, a little bling on there. Let's add a red. This is from the Holiday Rhinestones. I love these rhinestones because they match everything that you wanna make for the holidays. They have the red, they have the green, they have blues, they have gold. So I'm just gonna add a little red rhinestone there. That adds just the right touch. So there's my other one. And then I have another one in Cherry Cobbler with some pretty shaded spruce plaid. And this has another, you can see all the different versions of the tag shapes and all some of the different um, sentiments that you can put on there. Sweet Treat, Merry Merry, and then the Holly Jolly. All right, and those come together. You saw how fast they did. They're just so, so simple and cute. So today I'm gonna be giving away a free class kit so that you can create these projects yourself. And in the class kit, you're going to get enough to make three boxes in three different colors. So you'll be able to make one of each of these little boxes. You'll also be able to make two of these cards. And again, if you don't have the Elfie set, that's all right. You can use any kind of images that you want to. I love this because the wrapped in plaid with the beautiful cherry cobbler and shaded spruce and gold accents, they're gonna match a lot of different images that you have for Christmas since they're so traditional and festive. So you can use whatever images that you have that will work in these little spots. So again, for the live class, you're gonna get two, enough uh, supplies and everything to make two of these cards. Everything's gonna be pre-cut, pre-punched, and pre-scored. So all you'll have to do is assemble and obviously add your own stamping and coloring. And don't forget to add puff paint to your order if you want to have some of those really cute accents with the, the snowy accents, I love that. And then again with the boxes, you won't need to do anything but add um, a little stamped sentiment. I'll have all of the, the tags cut, the boxes will be cut. I'll have the pieces for the edges, uh, for the sides cut. You'll just need to trim those out and all of the ribbon and rhinestones that you'll need for those as well. So that will be our class kit. Again, to get the free class kit for this live class, you just need to place an order at twocoolstamping.com, click on the Shop Now link, and use the host code that I have here, WFW6AHHE. Again, you need a minimum $35 order, and this offer is going to last through next Tuesday. So um, that's, what is that, November 18th? Is it 18th, I think? <laughs> oh, I didn't look at the calendar, but whatever next Tuesday is. <laughs> um, 16th, 17th, 18th, it might be the 19th. Anyway, Tuesday, November 19th, I'm thinking that's it. Uh, so that's the last day for this offer. So make sure you get your orders in, use that host code, and I will send this kit out to you for free so you can make some of these projects on your own. All right, everybody, I hope that you've had a fun time learning how to make these really cute uh, wrapped in plaid uh, projects today and I will talk to you next week at our Facebook live class. This is Angie with Too Cool Stamping. See you soon. Bye-bye.